Welcome to Loopy Lion Designs. I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to make this adorable little Rudolph stuffy. It's done in two hoopings. We have one hooping for his ears and one hooping for his body. Even though this design that I'm stitching out is going to be done in a 5x7 hoop, all of the ears can be done in a 4x4 hooping to save you stabilizer and then you can have everything lined up and ready to go before you start. So I've done that already. Then you're going to need two pieces of fabric, one for the front and one for the back of him. You're going to need a piece for his muzzle, a piece for his nose, and a piece of, two pieces front and back for his ears. And then you also need one more piece for his body. And then you're going to need stuffing. These hemostats you can find at Walmart back in the fishing supplies. You can also order them on Amazon. These are great for turning and stuffing. You'll need regular scissors for cutting out the stuffed animal when it's done stitching and you're going to need your a pair of scissors. These are helpful for cutting around the appliques once we get to that part. I have now loaded my files onto my USB drive. You're going to need we're going to do the Rudolph Stuffy 4x4, so you're going to need the antlers and then you're going to need the coordinating stuffy design and then we'll head on over to the machine. Okay, I now have his ears or his antlers loaded onto my machine. So we're going to run the first step. You can run this in any color. It's going to go directly on your stabilizer. This is going to be your placement piece, stitch so you know exactly where to place your pieces. We're going to make a sandwich out of our vinyl and stabilizer. So we're going to flip it over. We're going to place a piece on the back covering all the stitches and lay it down and I'm using masking tape. You can use painters tape or you can even pin it in place but tape is a little bit easier with stabilizer or with um, vinyl, sorry. And then we're going to place the hoop back on the machine and make sure to put it back on the same way that you took it off. And then I'm going to lay a piece of vinyl over the top to also cover those. This one, since the stitching is pretty quick, you don't have to hold it down, but if you feel more comfortable using tape, again, or pins, go ahead and do that. And we're going to run the tack together stitch now. These are going to have raw edges. You're not going to be turning them, so they're going to stitch all your layers together to complete your antlers. Okay, so now our antlers are done stitching, so I'm going to take these off the hoop and I'm going to cut them out. I use tearaway stabilizer, so it's easy just to pull that right out so I can see where I'm cutting. And then we're just going to cut around the outer edge, and you want to make long uh, snips when you can just to keep your edges as smooth as possible. You can clean these up as well. And we're going to set these two at the side. I'm going to finish cutting this one out and then I'll meet you back over at the machine. Okay, we're back at the machine and I have my Rudolph stuffy file loaded on the machine. My stabilizer, again I'm using tearaway stabilizer. The first step we're going to run is our placement stitch and it's going to show us where to place our main fabric of the body. Now we have our placement stitch all stitched out straight on the stabilizer as you can see. Now we're going to place our front body fabric over the top of that and it's going to run a tack down stitch that will hold this fabric in place while we stitch the rest of them out. Okay, now we've 
finished our tack down stitch. So I'm going to lay a piece of water soluble stabilizer over the top. It just helps smooth things out while things are stitching. And we're going to run our placement stitch for his belly. Okay, we finished our placement stitch. We're going to lay our belly fabric right over the top and we've chosen white. So I'm going to run that stitch. Okay, now we have our tack down stitch. Our belly is tacked in place. So I'm going to grab my applique scissors and we're going to cut this out right around that fabric. It's easier if you can pull your hoop off of the machine. But if you can't or you don't want to, these scissors are great for getting into areas since they're curved and flat. You can get right up next to the fabric. We're going to go back to the machine. Now we're going to run his eyes. We're going to run the blacks and the whites of his eyes and then we'll come back. Okay, we've now finished his eyes and we're moving on to his muzzle. So we're going to run that placement stitch really quick. So we're going to lay our muzzle fabric or vinyl down now and it's going to run the tack down for that. of that I'm going to go ahead and run his nose tack down or placement and tack down before I cut everything as well. Okay we have our placement stitch for his nose and we're going to place the final applique piece right here and run that tack down. to take these over to the table again and cut them out. So we're going to cut right on the top. Be sure not to cut through the bottom layer because you'll get your muzzle. So we're just cutting the red. And now we're going to do the bottom layer to get around his muzzle. That way. And this is also where this plastic comes in handy so you don't cut over your main fabric as well. You don't want to cut all the way through. Kind of gives you a barrier to slide along. And make sure don't cut into his belly now either. So now all our appliques are done and we're just going to do his ears now. So I'm going to pull all of this off. And we'll go over to the machine and I will show you I have my antlers all cut out. So we're going to need those and we're going to need our back piece to our reindeer now as well. And then I'll meet you back at the machine. 
Okay, so I have our Rudolph back on the machine, and we're going to first run our placement steer stitch for his left ear when you're facing him, actually his right ear. So we're going to run that first, and I'm going to run that in pink so you can see where it goes. Whoops, and of course I had pink to begin with. So right where it's stitched, we're going to lay our antler down. When he's done and we flip him right sides out, we want his antler to sit like this. So in order, I'll pull this off, in order to get it to lay like that, we want to flip it opposite for our tack down. So we're going to flip it just like this. So this is the back of his antler. And once it's stitched and flipped, he, it's going to flip right up like that. So we're going to run that tack down stitch. And this is just holding this antler in place, but make sure the edge of it is on the outside of your stitch here so that when that final stitch goes around, this is sticking out and it'll grab that in the final stitch. So we're going to do the same thing on the other ear. I'm going to use a different color this time. We'll use green. And again, we're going to place it so you see the back side. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're going to lay it right over that green stitch line here. And we're going to have it run our tack down stitch. Now that he's all finished and ready to go, I'm going to lay our final piece of fabric over the top of him. We're going to have the right sides facing together because this is going to be the back of him. So when we turn him, we want the pretty side facing out. So we're going to lay that there make sure it covers his whole body. You can, again, you can pin this in place. You can tape it in place. For me, I'm just going to let it go here and make sure thread and we're going to stitch that up and we'll be right back. Okay, we're all finished with our stitching, machine stitching part of our Rudolph. So now we're going to take him off the hoop. He's all finished. And we're going to remove the stabilizer from the back. Around all the edges. And if you want, you can clear out what's back here. And we'll leave it behind his muzzle because it's stiff as it is, so you won't notice that back there. So we've got him all taken care of. So now what we're going to do is cut out the shape. We're going to cut right around this outer edge, right on the outside of that. And I'm going to use actual fabric scissors for this. I don't want to use my applique scissors just because we're going through a lot of fabric. And I like to keep those nice and sharp for when I'm working on the hoop. We're just going to cut around make sure and get your points right into the turns there. And this is a little tough up here is where the antlers are. But that's good because that means the antlers were sticking out so they got caught in the stitching and we want that. 
so they don't come out. Okay, so now we have them cut all the way around. And there's a little opening at the bottom here. And the easiest thing to do, if you have some of these, is go inside and grab one of the antlers. You don't want to grab both of them because they're facing opposite directions and they're both not going to fit at the same time. But get one through and then you can gently pull on him And make sure and be pulling on the actual fabric, not on the antler itself. And using vinyl, it's going to be a little fussier to turn because it's so stiff. But here's his other antler. If we pull that out, that'll help. If you need a little more space in your turn hole, you can clip a few stitches there. You're going to be hand sewing that closed anyway. And just keep working with it. Felt was a lot easier to turn just because it's not as stiff. Here we go, we have them all turned, and now his little ears are still stuck in there. So I'm going to snap these shut, poke them in here. You want a blunt object so you don't poke through the seams. And poke his little ears out. And when you're stitching him to begin with, when you stitch your placement and tack down stitches, you can use whatever colors you want, but sometimes it's helpful for your final stitch and your placement and tack down to use the same color because right here you can see the pink showing through and if you had done that in brown it wouldn't show as much but there he is and now he's ready to stuff and I'm not gonna stuff him all the way on camera because you can do that but the easiest thing to do is just grab little pieces you can do it with your fingers or you can use these they're great you can grab it and then you can push it right up to where you need it to go and you can stuff these as much as you want or as light as you want depending on how you want them to be and then when you're all done he's gonna look like this and you're gonna fold just a slight bit of this bottom part in here and you're going to use a needle and thread and hand sew this closed and the easiest thing to use is a ladder stitch and you can look up videos on YouTube and you'll just go back and forth and it kind of hides the stitches and then he's all ready to play with and this is a once he's all stitched out now's a good time to go around and clean up these stitches because once it's off the machine you can maneuver him the way you want to. You don't want to get too close and move things too much while it's on the hoop because you could risk bumping it or loosening the stabilizer and then your stitches won't line up. So get as much as you can to finish the project on the hoop and then once it's off you can clean that up to make it look more finished and snip your threads. So if you have any questions, make sure and post them in our group at facebook.com slash groups slash loopy designs. Uh, make sure and ask any questions you wish if you need any help or show finished products once you've made your own Rudolph.